and we should be up and running. Hello and welcome to the one and only the Mista. He is uh, by mo uh, by counted by most as the best Asian mythology player in the world. How are you feeling, the Mista? Feeling good? I'm feeling great at the moment. Thank you for having me here, Romis. Yeah, thank you for coming. It's uh, really cool to have you on board. I'd love to uh, to get some uh, answers from you, from the great mind. Hello and welcome to. I'm just of course, I'll try. I'll try my best. Sounds good. So, uh, were you excited about the launch of the uh, extended edition? Uh, obviously, we were expecting for a new age of mythology, something uh, from Microsoft for a lot of years. Exactly. I mean, everyone loves Age of Mythology. They would just Absolutely. want more. Yeah. Uh, when did you start playing, and what led you on the path to Age of Mythology? Like, what games? Uh, like, at what point did you actually find out about Age of Mythology, and what made you interested in the game? I started playing uh, RTS games when I was like seven years old. I used to play Red Alert on PlayStation 1. And then after that, I used to play Red Alert for like three years. And then I moved into uh, Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings, where I played uh, for, for the LOLs with my dad. We yeah. used to battle each other a lot. And, we used to, and then we, at the age of 11, I started playing online with my dad and we were like 2 e 2 against other people but I was getting better and better and better and at the age of 13 I was like 2000 rate on Age of Empires the Conquerors oh okay uh, that's good and then I after that I had some years of inactivity from RTS games I play. I was playing like some Rome Total War when it was launched uh, some Warcraft 3 some Lord of the Rings, a Battle for the Middle Earth, uh, that kind of uh, strategy games. And at uh, 2007, July uh, 21, <laughs> I played my first Age of Mythology game online. Really? That late? Yeah. And I was playing um, up to 2009, where I stopped and moved to StarCraft 2. And started again in 2013. Exactly one year. Five months and twenty-four days from now. Okay, so you have the date uh, already written down. Sounds yeah. good. And uh, in Age of Mythology, what uh, civilization god do you mainly play, and why do you do that? Uh, well, I'm Greek, right? I'm from Greece, right? That's true. <laughs> so That's a good point. I'm a Zeus player. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm a Zeus player. So, what's so good about Zeus that you made uh, him your favorite god? Well, basically, Zeus fits my playstyle. Uh, I like uh, when I play RTS games. Uh, I like to my style is to harass my opponent, at the same time control the map, and aim for a strong macro play. Like uh, I used to play Protoss in uh, Age in StarCraft Two as well. Okay. Yeah. And, and their Protoss is like it's all about a macro and harass, all about macro and harass. I really like that playstyle. Yeah. That's uh, actually the same uh, race that I I played when I played uh, StarCraft Two. I was actually the top four in Norway when it came out, but then I just got so bored with it, and now we have Age Mythology, which is a lot a lot more fun, if you ask me. I, I will agree with that. I like Age of Empire games a lot more than any other RTS games. Yeah. So my next question: uh, Do you think a lot of more people are focusing on other games uh, rather than Age of Empires? I mean, Age of Mythology, since the game came out so early, and we've kind of uh, gone very far when it comes to esport and RTSs in general. And do you think the game will, would uh, be a lot better in the meta game right now if a lot more people actually saw the game and how much fun it can be? Uh, the thing about meta game is that uh, it can't be evolved anymore. I mean, the meta game has evolved for the last about like 10 to 11 years. I mean, the game is out since 2003, right? That's I mean, true. You, it's like 2002 actually I think we are at the top right now we are at the top of the mountain there's nothing uh, there's no more 
you can't go, you can't climb more. Uh, now it's all about the balance changes. Uh, there should be some balance changes, and then the meta game will switch and shift. Uh, about the players that are playing other games, well, the thing is that uh, there are some bugs. We all know that there are some FPS lags, uh, FPS issues, and la- and bugs in the game that are being fixed right now. Uh, and that uh, maybe uh, makes some players to not want to play the game or to wait exactly. until those things are fixed. Because okay. if you have lag, if you're experiencing lag, experiencing <clears throat> lag in a RTS game and you want to play competitive, that makes you want to not play. Like it's. It's, lag is your worst enemy when you're playing a la- an RTS game, real-time strategy game. Lag is your worst enemy. I think that's uh, one of the things that made StarCraft 2 so great, because if you play any game in StarCraft 2, most of the time you will experience absolutely no lag, and yeah. it's it's a very fluent game experience. Do you know why, why that? Do you know why that works in StarCraft 2? It's because you don't uh, have to synchronize with your opponent. You synchronize with the server. So you connect to a server, and the server sends back data to you. As, as, and the server sends back, uh, back data to you and to your opponent. You don't have to connect with your opponent. So if your opponent lags, it, that doesn't mean that you will lag as well. Exactly. But in uh, the Age of Empires games, uh, at least in the ones that I have played, and I played all of them except the Age of Empires one, if you lag, your opponent lags. If your opponent lags, you lag, and that's not that good. Yeah, uh, they actually use a peer-to-peer connection, which means that both clients are connected together yes. uh, in the way they share the data. So, uh, do you, do you think that's something uh, Microsoft could change in the future for Age of Mythology, having dedicated servers? Do, do you uh, think there is enough reason to do so in the future, or maybe another age of mythology? Wink, wink. It, it's all about it's all about how committed age, uh, Microsoft will be with the games. I mean, when you make a game, obviously you want to make profit out of it, but you can't make you can't make profit without investing time, effort, and generally. You need to promote the game. I mean, look at Riot, right? Look at Riot. What, what, what they have achieved in like a year. Exactly. That that just shows how a game can grow tremendously over just a short yes. amount of time. I yep. I think it is the biggest game in the world right now. Yep, it is. Yeah, and also if you go to Twitch at any time of the year. They have like 90,000 90, yeah. viewers all the time, non stop. Always on top. So, my next, next question is uh, in a lot of other RTSs, or I'm referring mostly to StarCraft 2 right here, uh, you have uh, gaming houses where professional players are playing and they are have, being coached by uh, former players or just uh, real, really good players. Uh, do you think that's something that could happen uh, in the future with Microsoft games? Or do you think they have shown in the past that that's not something their games would be uh, inclined to do? Well, uh, like there's nothing that I can say that can't be done. It's all about, uh, as I said, the commitment. I mean, Microsoft is following a policy about not... Uh, I mean, I haven't seen a, a, a tournament being hosted by Microsoft, so there must be something about it. I mean, if there if there are tournaments, there are players. If the exactly. tournaments have uh, prizes, good cash prizes, then the players will invest time in those tournaments. The more time the players invest, the more into professional they go. They they step into professionalism. Yeah. And the more they go into this, we can consider having professional players. And if we have professional players who play for money, then suddenly we have a bigger viewer base and the game will grow. And if the game will grow, the sponsors, uh, the sponsorships yeah. will grow and tournaments, more tournaments will happen. And it's like a snowball effect. 
there is a good example by uh, Valve, the people behind Dota 2, Counter-Strike, games such as that. that. Yes. They, they hosted uh, their own tournament with $500,000 in the first prize. Do you, th- do you think that's something uh, Microsoft Studios should do in the future if they choose to make another Age of Empires or Age of Mythology or create a new franchise in the RTS genre? Because the, the eSport has grown so tremendously in the past few years. Do you think that's something they should be aiming for or do you not see that happening? Uh, if if they have the chance they should do it if they're gonna unleash an Age of Empires game a new Age of Empires game they should do this because Age of Empires is a big franchise I mean the name I mean who doesn't know Age of Empires exactly. who hasn't played at least one Age of Empires in his life and if they were to release a new Age of Empires it would be so easy to put it that game inside esports as long as they make the effort and obviously they need to put some more money in the game yeah. and I mean who doesn't like swords and, and bows and the whole concept the Age of Empire offers yeah it is truly unique uh, one of the things that I think uh, they did very well with Age of Empires is the whole story connection with the game as well as Age Mythology I think that's very intriguing and fascinating with the game that you can also learn a bit of history while playing a really well well crafted RTS, and I really hope they uh, release a new game in either of the franchises. Um, and on to the next question: Have you spoken to any of the developers, either Ryzen or uh, Prestige, for example? Do you know any of the future upcoming plans for the game, other than balance patches, which uh, I have been confirmed are coming up? Any, anything you could share that uh, maybe most people wouldn't know? I don't think I have anything new. All I know is uh, that the team is working hard to fix some issues. That's the only thing I know. Yeah. And uh, do you think the way the game is right now, do, do you think there is any possible way for the game to grow into a place where professionals could uh, thrive and uh, actually make money of the game in order to go by or do you, do you not see that for the future of age mythology like what kind of future do you see for the game if uh, we want to see uh, professional players in age of mythology the first step is to attract the players and the viewers in order to do that you someone needs to put the money and obviously the sponsor the sponsor is not going to put the money because he's not guaranteed to have some audience back. So the developer of the game has to first put the money for the tournament, for the first tournaments, in order to attract the players and the viewers. If, if it attracts good players, the good players will start practicing. The viewers will love what they see, more viewers will come. And then the sponsors will come and step in, and then more tournaments and then like you can't say you're a professional gamer if you win like one tournament now one tournament in three months or one tournament Mm. in five months because basically you can't live out of it so you're not a professional exactly so uh, in your position being the best player in the world or regarded by most people as the best player in the world in Asian mythology uh, what do you feel about the other players who are near the top uh, do you speak often to each other about uh, how the game has been growing? Do you, do you see an end to it soon, or, or do you really want the game to continue? Obviously, I want the game to continue. And if we speak a lot, well, obviously, we speak. I mean, we play to each other. And I see if the game will not die, obviously, uh, again, because the game is alive for like 11 years, 12 years. Mm. It hasn't died when ESO died. ESO was the online uh, platform for Age of Mythology. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't die when ESO died. So, I mean, if you don't die when your online platform falls apart and no one can enter and play online, then it won't die now. Yeah. 